in my previous video I discussed how to use a DS1307 real-time clock as a basically a crystal a selectable frequency crystal oscillator now we're going to turn our attention to the CD4040 I used two of them in this project connected in series to act as they're basically binary dividers here's a blow up of the pa uh, 16 pin dip package for the CD4040 it is a CMOS device I was surprised that it can go as low as 1 volt and it and is typical for CMOS to 15 volts we have oh we have 16 pins one is VCC the other is ground we have a pin that is it reset when this goes high all the registers outputs Q 1 through 12 are cleared and pin 10 is my square wave input here is the internal block diagram to a CD4040 it's just a string of flip-flops connected in series each flip-flop will divide by two and so forth I did something a little bit different here though is I labeled the flip-flops a little differently flip-flop Q1 is on pin 9 which would be the Q1 output I labeled the flip-flops based on the Q output on the 16 pin dip and it's 1 through 7 so let's just argue here is my frequency in over here pin 10 pin 11 is reset if you take reset high it's going to create a low here it'll disable a it'll go hot that'll be of course invert it to a high and will clear all the outputs of all 12 flip-flops to zero that is the output will be zero out here and uh, you notice it has a little buffer connected to each bit this also has a Smith trigger input to clean up your waveforms going in all right how to read this Q1 through Q12 look at them as powers of 2 and now the spec sheet is really vague on this all right let's look at Q1 what is 2 to the first power it's 2 so whatever frequency we're going to say whatever frequency is coming in for the input on pin 9 is going to be divided by 2 okay Q2 what is 2 squared 4 the frequency in is at pin 7 is going to be divided by 4 Q3 2 cubed is 8 so the frequency out of pin 6 corresponding to Q3 is going to be divided by 8 and you can go on down the whole line Q4 well that's 2 to the fourth power that's 16 pin 5 frequency will be the input divided by 16 and so forth if you go all the way to Q12 well 2 to the 12th power is 4096 I think yes 4096 so if you put in 4096 Hertz on pin 10 input on Q12 you come out with 1 Hertz and that's what I was doing to to run the DS1302 clock circuit in the previous video to it would count the 1 Hertz pulse and update the clock and out and display the time on a terminal or whatever else you want to but these are all multiples of the same these are all multiple divisions powers of two you can take the output of anywhere in here in one and add it to uh, feed it to the pin 10 input on a following chip and you have another divide by 4096 by the time you get a high output on pin one of the second chip it would have been it would have taken 4096 seconds 
All right, I redrew the 16 pin dip for the CD4040, but instead of these vague Q numbers, I put what the divide, uh, what each pin divides the input frequency with. So the input in the, in the rest of the video that you will see on a USB oscilloscope, I think was uh, four, was, uh, yes, 4096 hertz. Divided down will give you one hertz. And different frequencies, we will see how it works. And you can move your oscilloscope around and see the how these frequencies are square waves are divided. All right, what you're looking at here is my USB oscilloscope. It's a Handtech 6022BE. This is a terminal program called Putty. I'll do separate videos explaining those two pieces of software, but for now, let's observe channel one and channel two. Channel one has the output from the DS1307 real-time clock. This is its square wave output that it's programmed at presently. The frequency is 4,098 hertz or so. Channel 2, though, is 32 hertz. This has been run through a divider using a CD4040. That's another separate video on how those work. And divides whatever frequency from the DS1307 is divided by 128. Let's take a calculator. Let's input 4096. Let's divide it by 128. And you get 32. All right, let's clear it. What if we had 8,192 hertz? 8,192 hertz. Divide it by 128. We should have 64 hertz on channel 2. Let's do that. Let's see if it actually works that way. I press a button on the uh, controller unit. There is my menu. I will select three. Now the output frequency is 8.192 kilohertz. 8.19, pretty close. 64 hertz. There you go. All right. What if we had a... Oh, let's see. Let's try 32,768. 32,000... 768. That is the oscillator frequency of the crystal in the DS1307 circuit. Let's divide that by 128. And we should get 256. Let's see if it actually works that way. I'm going to press the switch on the, control on the uh, microcontroller. I'm going to select four. There's your input frequency. There's your 256 hertz or so. Just like that. And you see right here, you notice the frequency obviously changed with the time base still set at 20 milliseconds. Let's again, let's go back. Of course, I could always hit one. And the output frequency is 1 hertz. But it hardly reads that. Let's go ahead back to 4096 again. 4096, 98, whatever this thing is counting. And it comes back to 32 hertz. So that shows that I am changing the square wave output frequency of the DS1307 clock circuit which makes a nice, accurate time base. Finally, if you're curious, here's the chip that I use to divide the frequency down to get 32 and 64 hertz or whatever. It's a CD4040. That Your output square wave goes to the input pin here. 
I've drawn this a different way. Oh, that's nice. I've drawn this in a different way that most people do, but that's in the separate video. And the output was taken from pin 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And whatever the input frequency is here is divided by 128. That's how I, how I was dividing the output frequency by 128.